Welcome back friends and as I'm sure you guys who've been following along probably somewhat bored lately because me and my good friend Carrie have been going through the Tree of Weird. So this week we are of course at the Saturn Gate, the last and final gate. So something weird already happened. I would manage to somehow lose the sigil I drew. Lost. I somehow lost. Is that what I said? I can't talk today. I somehow lost the sigil I drew of this gate, and I had put in between the piece of paper my jumbo sized Rider weight Emperor card and another card, I think. And now I can't find where the hell they went, and I'm tripping out. So, anyway, um. <clears throat> I feel really strange today. I feel like I'm coming down with some kind of weird um, summer cold. I always get these summer colds where it's like, I feel like I'm getting body aches and I just feel like I'm about to get the flu or something, but I am determined to uh, make this happen. So, you know, I've been studying different names and these uh, dark gods and stuff and and, you know, I take it all with a grain of salt, but I've also taken it very seriously. So I want to create an actual ritual that's dedicated to the dark gods. Much like I did the dedication to the nine uh, demonic kings, which I felt was, for me, a absolutely life-changing ritual. <clears throat> which, by the way, Carrie, uh, I want to give you my version of that. That uh, I think I have it on my computer, and I just need to... Uh, send you a copy in my email of my version of the nine divines ritual. It's a three day ritual and it just, for whatever reason, it was awesome. And I think if you tried it, you would like it too. So anyway, I'm sitting here contemplating this gate and the names in the gate and really thinking about Saturn as a planet and also just thinking about the energy of Saturn. So, <clears throat> it's sort of a, I kind of get an image, images, image or images of things like wild fawns who are very masculine and almost demonic looking type fawns who are romping through a very, um, I guess you would say kind of a, instead of a foresty, more of a desolate sort of black sand looking area, like, uh, like the desert, but with more mountains and kind of more deserty trees, but not quite human, not quite fawn, just sort of a individual with horns, much like the individual that's described in the book, I think, um, but I, again, when I'm looking at the gate, I always, I glance over, I read this stuff a couple times, then I take what's important from it, and I try to just simply do these meditations. And so right now, all I'm doing is more of a contemplation as where later in the week, we'll obviously go through the gate and have the real experience. But what I'm getting is like little glimpses, like as if you were looking through a portal. So I'm seeing... Well, I guess you could call it like a war torn or or not war torn but more like an area that's been torn by weather like like something that was a civilization that is now almost turned to dust almost like when you see those documentaries of Egypt or the Mayan temples or something like that it's it's an area that's very exotic and I can't really put it into words um I feel like I want to reach down and fill the material that I'm crouched down on, the ground itself, and it's like a beach sand, but with bigger rocks and sort of sharp debris in it. It's not nice ground. Um, I mean, it, it's not horrible, but it's like, it's a mix. It's a mixture of sand and other sharp shards of things that are in there, like either seashells or 
or some sort of just pebbles or rocks or maybe even bones bones maybe yeah um oh i get it <clears throat> okay it's as if i'm walking on some sort of saturnian planet land okay okay yeah sorry <laughs> i know i blacked out there for a minute so yeah um those are the kind of impressions i'm getting when i look at the emperor card i i gotta go back backtrack and talk about the rat the fucking rat has haunted me since i took out the rat so and I'm not talking about giving the rat to the snake. So for you guys who I haven't told this story to yet, I've got to tell you what I did. And it's it's uh, kind of funny, but kind of sad and kind of disgusting uh, more than anything. But so long story short, I needed to get a live rat or rats, which I keep for the snakes now. So I went to the pet shop and I'm like, look, I need medium rat. You know, how many you got? I'll take four. So he's like, I don't have any. All I have is the large rats. And I'm like, fine, I'll take four of them. Because I think he can handle them. So anyway, <laughs> I open the box when I get home. And there's four rats in there. But one of these rats is like the size of a small rabbit. And I'm like, holy shit, he can't eat this. He's still considered a baby snake. You know, he'll die trying to eat this thing. So I thought, well, maybe he'll kill it. And then if he doesn't eat it, I'll just dispose of it. You know, it's not a lot you can do in that situation. No one's going to return the rat. Um, so, long story short, I put him in the damn aquarium, and the fucking rat, he couldn't kill the rat if he tried. It, he tried, the rat just kept screaming and jumping. I don't know why I didn't videotape it. I think it would have been way too hard to videotape it, unless I had set up in advance, but this all happened kind of randomly. <laughs> so... This big black rat, he's scared as shit, and you know, I'm manhandling him because he's trying to get away. It's like he knows he's about to die. So what did I think I'm gonna do? So, well, he can't kill the damn thing. I can't just let it go outside. He'll breed and he'll have wild rats in the yard. So I'm like, well, I'll just drown him. You know, I, I don't have my pellet gun. I can't shoot him in the head. You know, I'm not into torturing animals. I just, you know, I have snakes. So anyway, I fill up the sink in the kitchen and I proceed to walk over with the rat in a towel and I have uh, some thick black gloves on, like work gloves. And I proceed to try to drown the rat. Well, he was not having it and he put up a fight from hell. So he's like dog paddling in the water and I'm like pushing him back down and I'm holding him down with both hands with all my might. I mean, keep in mind, I lift weights and you know, I have a physical job and I'm in good shape and I can barely keep this thing underwater and it's under, you know, two gallons of water. My hands are totally submerged. He will not die. Like there's no bubbles coming up, nothing. He just keeps managing to get out of my grip and I keep grabbing him and holding him back onto the water. So it makes me sick to have to say it. So I started squeezing him a little bit with hopes that it would squeeze the air out of him and then like blood shot out of his mouth. And this is like all underwater. So it like was a fucking watery death, you know? So he pops back up and he's still not dead. And I'm like, dude, will you please just die? So <laughs> the fucker is bleeding. Uh, he's scared. I, you know, I'm still trying to drown him. Finally, I had to just kind of take both of my hands and then kind of lean in on him and crushed his head a little bit. And it did finally kill the rat, but it made me sick to do it. And what has that got to do with the Saturnian gate? Well, you know, hunting, um, the hunter, the hunter king, the king of hunters. That's one of the things that comes to mind. It's like a, an individual that is kind of half animal himself, but he's kind of a hunter in his own right. I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know what he hunts, but he's like a half breed creature with kind of elky looking horns that I'm now seeing. And there's several of them. They're different. There's like different creatures that look like this. They're not really scary, but they're not exactly like the kind of creature you'd want to pet. That's what I'm getting so far from gazing into this gate. 
So anyway, I'm enjoying it, and I'm trying to do it without um, reading too much about Mars, because then I feel like it just gives you too much to think about, and you can't just absorb the symbols and stuff. So uh, I have not done a full attempt to go in and out or use any kind of anything to uh, help my journey or anything yet. So I've just been trying to sleep less and less, and now I feel like I'm getting sick with some horrible cold. So, after killing this rat, I really had to contemplate just how easy it is to take a life. Uh, well, it's harder than you think to take a life, for one. So, I didn't think it'd be a big deal to drown a rat. He was a tougher rat than I thought. I mean, he was trying to bite me the whole time, and obviously he didn't. Um, he fought for his life, and he didn't make it. So... <laughs> He ended up in a trash can and not a snake, a snake's stomach. That's unfortunate because I don't like to waste uh, a life for nothing. But that being said, poor rat. So anyway, um, it's not the same. You know, if you hire a hitman, like let's just say whenever I feed the rat to the snake, it's like I'm calling up someone to kill this uh, enemy of mine and he does the job. But when you do the job yourself, it's a totally different feeling. It's it's not like shooting a bird out of a tree or something. I mean, when you strangle something to death or drown something with your bare hands and feel it and see it lose life and bleed. Um, and I'm so glad, Carrie, that you're into hunting and you have an understanding of what it's like to go through that. Because I think as human beings that love animals, we feel like there's some kind of strange um, dichotomy there that we love them, yet we do understand that animals have to die it's a, for whatever reason, whether it's food or whatever. So um, it's got to happen. But humane and insane, I think, would be my two guidelines for killing animals. Um, I feel so more open after doing the gates, I really feel like there are energies that are slowly siphoning into me, I guess you could say. And I think that might be why I've been so tired and feeling even sick. And I get the feeling that you aren't feeling too great either. So, you know, <laughs> we're going to need a long rest before our next adventure. But I have a feeling our next adventure is going to be even more badass. So, um, where we're going is great. What we're doing is great. We're... We're really taking this to heart. I know I am, and you are too. And I'm just so thankful for this whole background and history about Onine and everything that that I've experienced and learned uh, because of you, Carrie. So thank you so much, and thank you, friends, for watching. And uh, damn, dark blessings, and uh, I hope you never have to strangle a rat to death. <laughs>